the Cube, covering WTG Transform 2019. Brought to you by Winslow Technology Group. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman. We're here in Boston, Massachusetts, across the Mass Pike from Fenway Park, and happy to welcome back to the program Mike Berthew, who's Director of Systems Engineering at Nutanix, a good partner of Winslow Technology Group. Mike, uh, thanks for joining us. Well, as always, Stu, it's great to be here. This is number three for us, I think. Yeah, this has become uh, a bit of a tradition. The third year we've done at this. Uh, I've mm. seen you at many of the local user groups here. And yeah. uh, as I say, a nice home game after uh, you know lots of travels around the globe, uh, talking about lots of technologies. For so, sure, looking um, forward to it. Like what I always love uh, digging in in a show like this is we've got users, you know. We do. Uh, Scott and the team have 189 users, uh, many of them are Nutanix customers. Yes, uh, so let, let's start there. Is you know what, what's top of mind from you know your customers today? A lot. So there's a lot happening, as we know in the industry. Things are changing, and um, you know our customers are trying to figure out what it means for them. Um, but at the end of the day, it's all about IT providing bit value back to the business. I think CIOs, and we were just speaking about this in my session, are really pushing their, their staff to look at public cloud as a potential option. Uh, so in, in many of the folks working in the trenches realize that, yeah, public cloud actually does make sense for some things, but not necessarily everything. The true strategy we have to have as an organization is multi-cloud and figure out how to make that work. So that's, that's really what we're hearing. And the good news is from a product portfolio, Nutanix and what we're doing, we're really very much in lockstep with that. Yeah, you know, when, when I think back, you know, when the, 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 that whole wave of hyper-converged infrastructure, HCI, which, you know, Nutanix to its credit never mm -hmm. was like, you know, HCI, HCI, um, it was about simplicity, it was about working on the business, and underneath it's that software that drives the company. Uh, that there, you know, the founders of the company came from some of the hyperscalers, you know, some of the file system design underneath there. So when and you hear, you know, well, you know, the promise of public cloud is it's supposed to be, you know, simple and economic. Well, public cloud we understand is neither simple nor cheap. That's right. Uh, Hyperconverged infrastructure did simplify environments and you know changes the economics of how we think of it. When I've talked to Nutanix customers, it's like, oh hey, you know, I no longer need to do constant care of feeding of this stack of wires and stuff put together. Uh, much of it is is much simpler. So. You know, you, you talk about customers, they're, they're going to that multi-cloud, you know, hybrid cloud environment, they're trying to figure out their strategy. Um, I, Rick Gowan in his pre presentation uh, said something that I, I, I thought resonated with me, which is you don't want to end up in hybrid cloud, kind of just you ended up there by mistake without plans, and unfortunately, that's where a lot of IT is. I've got lots of projects that I do, and I do them right. as I need them, and then I realize, oh wait, somebody's got to manage, maintain, and pull all these things together. So, help, help us understand where Nutanix fits in that multi-cloud story today, which is more than just uh, kind of where people that, that might not have looked in a couple of years know the appliance. Yeah, sure, and, and I think from our, and you mentioned before, our roots really come from those, those big, large public cloud environments like Google and Amazon and others. But when we talk about multi-cloud, and, and you also made the point that simplicity is probably one of the core values that our customers see Nutanix as being you know, on the forefront there. So I would say that for me, hybrid cloud, and I think the mantra within Nutanix, hybrid cloud is not something that many uh, manufacturers have been able to achieve. It's a lot of separate silos, right? And as soon as you create multiple silos, you're actually creating, you're, you're creating operational disruption and you're actually creating complexity. So if you have to manage you know, public cloud A, public cloud B, your on-prem environment and maybe your remote offices and even your edge with all with different management tools, there's not a ton of value there from a simplicity standpoint. So what we strive to do is we strive to create that abstraction, right? That consistent single control plane that goes between your on-premises, your remote offices, and now truly extend that into the public cloud so I can manage my resources in the public cloud in the same way I would on premises. Um, whether that be next generation uh, applications that probably truly do belong in a public cloud, like my cloud native apps, or my traditional legacy applications that have been running in my data center for years. So that's really what it comes down to, is, is being able to provide that true seamless experience you know, for users. And at the end of the day, businesses and users shouldn't really care where their applications are. It should be whatever is most cost effective for the business. 
and based on who you are as a user, if you're a developer or you are a an executive, where my application is shouldn't matter. It should be just be able to. It should be available wherever I am. Yeah, uh, Mike. One of the things that's been interesting in watching Nutanix is not just the growth of the core market, but uh, it's kind of got this three-tier architecture. You have a lot of different software pieces, some of which, yep. at least today, are not necessarily directly tied back to the original yeah. hyperconverged infrastructure. Where are you with the you know customers locally? You know, and, and yeah. any kind of proof points you can give us that kind of sure. help us understand the strategy a bit more? I think the majority of the customers uh, running Nutanix uh, here locally in New England and, and probably a good you know, majority of, of, um, of the world are running Nutanix, running kind of the core Nutanix, right? And the value that they're deriving from that, they're seeing there is, is immense, right? They're getting uh, the simplicity, having the ability to run their operations click one button to do their upgrades without disruption, there's a lot of value there. That's solving many of the issues. Now the, the higher level capabilities and the higher level features, in order to be able to deliver those um, in a consistent way, you have to have a solid core foundation. Right? So that solid core foundation is our core HCI platform or our cloud-like infrastructure. One of the things I'll always say to customers is when you look at your Nutanix infrastructure, your software-defined data center, it actually resembles what's running in a public cloud. So whether you, if you're running applications in Amazon, for example, you're running in a highly scalable distributed architecture. That's the exact same thing you're doing with Nutanix. And the reason they've been able to deliver those higher value services is because they have that solid foundation underneath it. So if you want to run your environment in a similar way and have true hybrid cloud, you've got to you know, follow their playbook and the technology that you're choosing, and we believe that Nutanix is that right choice. Yeah, and, and in many ways, we're seeing the blurring of the lines between them. Uh, you know, I've interviewed people from Nutanix at some of the Kubernetes show. Uh, that that experience that I have, uh, and, and Nutanix has partnerships with some of the uh, public cloud environments. So we're, we're seeing that you know location you know matters a little bit less. Absolutely, absolutely. I think the the Nirvana again, if we can imagine what what this is all going to look like five years from now. It's a single portal, a single interface where I'm requesting some sort of a business service or an application, and when I deploy it, it's not going to ask me where it's going to go. It's going to put it where it belongs based on the cost and business logic that I've actually defined in the system. And if it needs to go in Amazon or it needs to go in Azure, the decision is going to be made based on business logic, logic as opposed to technology decision, All which right. I think is where it, what matters. So, so Mike, I can't let you go without yeah. talking about uh, you know. So, uh, you know, Winslow Technologies here mm -hmm. is a big Dell partner, 100%, and they sell yeah. the Dell XC solution here. Uh, there are people out there, and there's like, well, you know, the Dell relationship. Uh, you know, yes, they are one of Nutanix's biggest partners, but they are also, if you look out of the market and you look at market share, mm -hmm. the, you know, the biggest alternative to a Nutanix HCI option is the Dell EMC VX Rail. So, you know, help us understand, you know, that dynamic, how that's playing out uh, in your world. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, and I kind of expected the controversial questions as always on the queue, so thanks, Stu. But in, in terms of that, I mean, I, I would say that, you know, when you look at Nutanix, the first thing I'll say is all HCI is not created equal. I mean, it, you know, there's, pretty significant differences between the two platforms. Yeah, you know, combining compute and storage, we could loosely define as HCI, but we really can't look at competing solutions as true cloud-like infrastructure. Running our controller virtual machine in, in the user space and having mobility of applications across hypervisors and across clouds on a single platform is something very unique to Nutanix. So we're absolutely seeing you know, competitive pressure for sure, but when we you know, have the opportunity to talk to customers about what their multi-cloud journey re really means to them, um, the discussion usually moves forward in, in a positive way. So I mean, I think, again, our view, our perspective, you mentioned simplicity, we're all about choice, freedom of choice. We don't want to lock our customers into any one particular, particular technology. Let's do what, the biz what makes most sense for the business, whether it's a, you know, alternative public cloud, alternative hardware, or even alternative hypervisors. We, we give customers choice. We don't have a religion around any one particular technology. We talk about um, containerization, for example, in Kubernetes. We, we, have the, we give customers the ability to deploy Kubernetes on-prem, leveraging the open source version of Kubernetes. All of the capabilities within the Nutanix platform will run on any of the hypervisors we support, right? So that's, you know, that's an important distinction too. It's not like we're telling you you have to run one particular hypervisor to get X feature. So an important distinction point there is we, we truly do believe in giving our customers the freedom to choose. Yeah, that's great. Uh, just last thing, uh, Mike, yeah, I, I got to imagine your customers are asking you a lot of questions. There's all mm -hmm. these new things coming out mm -hmm. there that 
look, sound, or feel a little bit like what Nutanix is doing. So, you know, from the big ones like AWS Outposts, uh, Azure, you know, had Azure Stack, now is the new Azure HCI, mm -hmm. um, you know, so w what do you tell your customers when they start calling and asking about these technologies? Well, uh, you know, if, if you look at the history, we've been doing this for a long time now. Uh, I've been here for over five years, um, and Nutanix has been doing this since two, we released our product back in 2011. Uh, after a couple of years of, of development. So we've been doing it longer than anybody else. Um, and we also really built our platform around the mantra that we are highly scalable, distributed architecture, allow enabling choice and, simplic and providing a level of simplicity that customers won't see in any other platform. Um, so you know, just the, the amount of development and engineering and focus around our customers and the needs of our customers really makes us a standout. And if you look at just the overall growth of Nutanix and the transition we're making now to more of a subscription-based business model, um, it makes sense for customers and we've given them the ability to consume in a way that is even more incremental than it was in the past and certainly uh, more differentiated than what our competitors can do. All right, Mike Perthium, always a pleasure to catch up Thanks, with sir. you on camera as well as off. Thanks so much for joining Thank us. Thank you very much, appreciate it, Stu. All right, uh, more coverage here from WTG Transform 2019. I'm Stu Miniman, and thanks for watching theCUBE. Was I supposed to?